Now I know it's gonna be people that when they see the title of this video, they're gonna be like, "Oh, don't feel bad. It's a business." I know it's gonna be all type of crazy comments, but I really do feel bad for uh, Ravens wide receiver James Prochet um, because it it has been a very very just business side alone. Because personal side has been rough for him too, but business side alone, it's been really really rough for James Prochet um, for this past. I can't even just say year and change, but really uh, for the majority of his entire uh, career as a Baltimore Raven. Um, he got drafted uh, because he was known for uh, his his high point in the ball and, and, and making contested catches, and he was known for not dropping the ball at all. Like, And there were moments when I even said plenty of times, because it's on videos and stuff, where I said James Prochet, he had the best hands on the team. Cause really, they feel that way uh, because he did not drop nothing. And, again, that's what him and Devin DuVernay, they came out the same year. That's what they were known for in college. They were known for not dropping the ball at all whatsoever. So it was like, all right, Ravens had some issues with some drops in the past, and they drafted them, too, with that intention of not dropping. So, all right, let's go. Let's get it. Let's see how it turns out. But for James Prochet specifically, um, not even just this offseason, but throughout his entire career, it's just – it's really been rough, and I feel for him. And then especially this offseason, too, with the way that it's currently going business-wise, so with the Baltimore Ravens, but personal-wise, too. Um, I know we, of course, talk Ravens all day, every day on here, so I know most people would be focused on that. But then with him just a couple of months ago having lost his mom, too, that's big, man. That's big, and... um. That, that can just mess your whole psyche up. That can mess your whole mental up. Because uh, if you've ever, like, lost somebody and then still had to come into work and still had to come into work with a high-pressure job and, like, as a football player, that's obviously a super high-pressure job, as uh, y'all already know. But, and I'm not even joking about this, but as a Ravens wide receiver, that's definitely a high, high-pressure job for sure. Because to the public, in the public's eye, and I'm sure even in the private eye, but to the public's eye, that's not a place where receivers are known to flourish. That's not a place where receivers are known to make it. So you as a Ravens wide receiver, especially getting drafted late too, because he was, a, I want to say, a fifth or sixth round pick. I think sixth round pick from SMU. So he was a late round draft choice by the Baltimore Ravens at wide receiver. So right then and there from jump. He was a, a super long shot to make it, a super long shot to have an impact from the beginning, just based off of the team alone. Um, and just so that that's tough right there. But then everything that he's undergoing throughout this point in his career is just it's, it's really, really tough, man. And I, I really do feel bad uh, for James Prochet because and, and right now it's like it seems like with James Prochet, um, it's it's almost like everything that could go wrong on the football field, it does go wrong uh, on the football field. Uh, obviously, most recently, um, he did have a catch afterwards. And the same thing happened last week, too, um, to where it's a big play, a uh, big negative play uh, by James Prochet, but then he makes it, he has a catch afterwards. But I feel like the the, the how big those bad plays were, they just overshadowed everything else. This week, it was against the Commanders. While, again, I, I did say it, it was not the, the, the best thrown ball in the world. It, it could have been a little higher. It could have been able to put it out a little, put out a little bit more. Um, but it did give James Prochet a legitimate shot at making a catch. And it's like a, a ball like that at that spot of the field, too. I mean, I know for me, I automatically going to think, all right, well, if, if it ain't no completion, then it's going to be incompletion. Whether it's a drop, whether it's a swat, a knockdown or whatever, it's going to be incompletion at the worst. But it's like with, with Prochet, all the crazy stuff has been happening to him. Like, who, who intercepts a ball like that? Who, like, that, that was just crazy, man. Because I remember just watching it live and the ball's up in the air and it's, it's sailing and sailing and sailing. James Prochet jumps to try to catch the ball. And I, I thought it was going to be a catch because I thought it was going to be uh, reminiscent like of that um, the, him versus the commanders a couple years ago in the preseason. When he caught the same exact spot too. Same exact spot. 
He caught the ball over that uh, commander's cornerback, and he was staring him in the face, and he took off his helmet and all that. I was like, all right, Prochet, let's get it, baby. Because it was in the same spot, so I thought it was going to be the same thing. But at the worst, I'm like, okay, if he don't catch it, incomplete. So when we saw him drop it, it was like, oh, okay. But then the commander's defender intercepted it. It's like, really, man? How does that happen? I thought that was one of the hardest interceptions that I ever saw. I've, I've like, there's obviously interception, intercepting the ball in, in NFL. There's a certain level of difficulty to it, but that one was an extreme level of difficulty. Um, but then we go back last week. They got James Prochet on punt return again. Another big play, but it is a big negative play. Uh, and he he dropped the ball again. James Prochet not known for drops, man. Not known for drops, and he dropped the ball. I, I, and I know mistakes happen all the time. Nobody's perfect. Um, but I just wonder, like, is he overthinking? Was he sort of pressing almost? What's, what could it be? What, what's, is it the pressure, again, of being, and not only this year, just being a Ravens wide receiver, but the, with everything that's in front of him? Because there's so much in front of him. So I'm sure he's been thinking about it. And again, we, we know the Ravens love, they love James Prochet. We know that. They love James Prochet. And James Prochet, good people. But um, I know he's got to be facing an intense, immense amount of pressure, especially this year, because of what the Ravens have done at wide receiving, really what they've done over the past couple of years. Yeah, they traded Hollywood away, but over that time they had – Draft, well, before they traded Hollywood, they drafted Bateman. They signed Sammy Watkins. They um they brought in Demarcus Robinson, Deshaun Jackson. They brought Sammy Watkins back again. Um, and now this this year specifically though, this has really been the year where it's like, whoa, okay, because they signed first. They signed Nelson Aguilar. It's like, oh, okay, that's cool. But then they signed Odell Beckham Jr. It's like, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, then they drafted Zay Flowers. It's like, whoa, okay, it's cool. Uh, then they signed Laquan Treadwell, Dante Demas Jr. Uh, they, like, there's a Sean Ryan who came out of nowhere the other day or last week in the preseason. We didn't see him this week in the preseason, but he came out of nowhere. They brought back Shamar Bridges. They just, they've added a lot at wide receiver, and that the room is thick. It, it's, it's thick because it's, it's so many people in there. At the wide receiver position And they all seem to be fighting for Essentially one spot And then you still got Tylen Wallace in the building too Who they drafted a couple years ago And that puts even more pressure on Not only James Prochet But just everybody Just seeing what Tylen Wallace has been doing His draft status alone uh, Being a couple years ago Being a fourth round pick That helps him out Ravens obviously really like Tylen Wallace as well Because they, they got high hopes for him And we talked about this last year. That's that's when I really saw how much they liked Tylen Wallace as well because there was a point where he got hurt and they put him on injury reserve and Harbaugh was like, oh, no, we're probably going to bring him back. And I was thinking, nah, Harbaugh, he's just talking. He's not good. He's not going to bring Tylen Wallace back. Y'all barely have him out on the field on offense. Y'all are not going to bring no Tylen Wallace back. I know you're not. You're just talking. They brought Tylen Wallace back. And they got – and because and, – and that was significant because – Bringing somebody back from injury reserve, you got to open up a roster spot for them on the 53. And they opened up a roster spot for Tylen Wallace on the 53. So I was like, whoa, that's, that was something. Um, and him doing special teams, him being out there wide receiving in this preseason, two games, two touchdown catches. He's been doing his thing. And then he even, um, I think he even drew the pass interference call in the, in the game on Monday night too, I believe. So, but back to James Prochet. It's just been tough, man. It's, it's, it's been tough. Um, and I, I really do feel for him because I know football fans can be really harsh. Football fans can be extremely rough. Um, and we see this stuff like social media. Like people are, can be really nasty just in general. Um, but I, I tell my guy, Meech, all the time that I really hope that James Prochet don't be going on Twitter because people be like saying all kind of crazy stuff, man. And that stuff, to the right person, they could break them. It, it really could. Um, and we know, that, again, football is just, it's nationally televised and whatnot. And these guys, they always talk about how their, their, their job is so tough because it's on public display 24-7. 24-7.
how much they make, if they're doing good or bad, uh, how different people feel about them, and their job performance, all that stuff, 24-7 on full displays, public information. And it's like, man, so in every single week, people are watching them, seeing how they're doing and whatnot. Um, so with James Roche, man, it's, it's, I feel like he's just in such a tough spot right now. Um, and again, I, 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 do, I do feel bad for him. And again, I know it's a business. I know it's a business. That's why I ain't no GM. If I was a GM, my, my feelings would get in the way too much times, man. Um, but then, like, with James Prochet, this offseason, like, with this preseason, it's been re- really rough for him, man. But then you even go back to, to last year. You go back to, to during the season last year, and it was just, it was like a lot of the same stuff. Because it was like, with James Prochet, I think, like, his, his penalty yardage was, like, very close to his total uh, receiving yards for the year. But it was, like, every time, like, the ball went his way, just about. Well, I guess just as much as he made, he, he got catches and got positive yards, just as much he got penalty yards. It, it was always something bad, too, and big bad stuff, too. Like, he would negate a first down because of a – um. What was the penalty? Was it not unnecessary roughness? I think he was like getting into it with I forgot what team it was. He was getting into it with somebody somebody on the sideline and they ended up calling the penalty on him. That lost the Ravens some yards. And then of course we know the um the Greg Roman play where I just I I was like, Oh yeah, this one Greg Roman. I yeah, he's he got the job at Stanford. He ain't coming back to the Ravens. Definitely not after this week. Where they did, what was it, like an end around, and they pitched it to James Prochet, and they had him throw the ball, and he threw it in the triple coverage against the Broncos, and it ended up being an interception. And it was like, man, it, would, it was crazy, though, to watch that. But it's, it's just been, it's been really crazy to see how things have just happened to James Prochet uh, on the football field, um, especially since last year. But even if you go years back, too. Just the system that he was drafted into, again, as a wide receiver. Especially, like, even before, like, even previous systems by the Baltimore Ravens have been rough on wide receivers. But then with Greg Roman, it's especially rough on wide receivers. On most wide because it, like, if you're the top wide receiver, if you if you the, the number one guy in the Greg Roman offense as a wide receiver, you could do okay. But everybody beyond that. Especially the number threes, number fours, wide receivers, especially number five and six, you ain't gonna do much of anything because the offense doesn't really feature wide receivers like that. It doesn't implement different wide receivers like that. So for him being drafted to the Ravens, drafted to that offense, it'll run heavy. If you're a running back, hey, you're gonna get yours. Offensive lineman, hey, it's an easy way to get paid, great. But wide receiver, oof, it can be rough. It can be a struggle. So you to be drafted into that and like your your spot on the depth chart was already it was behind some people. So it's rough, man. Um but with James Proche, I don't know, man. I just being straightforward, I, I don't think it's it's looking too good as far as um him being on the team. What I think I said this before too. Um I could see them doing one of those Phantom injury things where they put him on injury reserve, uh, so he's around but he's not on the team, and then maybe doing like a whether they keep him on injury reserve or they do a, uh, a, a, a injury settlement where they waive or release him a little bit afterwards, or I don't know. Because I just after er- the way that everything has been, I, I just that that six wide receiver spot, I, I just don't see it going to him because it, it's been rough, man. I do, like I said, I really, really feel for him, man. I really, really do, man. Um, but I think what would be better, and this is just my opinion. I don't know anything from anything. I don't know nothing from nothing. I'm not no insider at all. Like I always say, I'm an NFL outsider. Cause I ain't got no plugs, no sources, no contacts, none of that stuff. Um, but with James Prochet, I just feel a, a fresh start, in my opinion, would be best. Just a fresh start, new scenario, new scenery, all, I feel like that would be best Because sometimes that's what we all need sometimes Because I don't Obviously none of my jobs compared to being in the NFL So James Prochet could definitely hang his hat on that Like he made it to the NFL And he's lasted in the NFL A lot of people can't say that Again it's the top 1% period In the world Top 1% of people in the world make it to the NFL Well only 1% of people in the world make it to the NFL That's it That's it 1% That's it The other 99% they don't make it 
So shout out to James Prochet for that. And he's been in there and he's lasted. So, but I've been in jobs where it's been rough. It just seemed like everything's going wrong. Everything that can go wrong does go wrong. And it's like, man, is it me? Is like, what's going on? And sometimes it can be. Sometimes it can be. But other times it could be like, you know what? Even if it is you. Sometimes it'll be like a, a fresh start. It can help all of that stuff. So just want to give a special shout out to James Prochet. Um, because again, I, I know things have been like rough. Because from from what we see, and, and imagine this, we see it just as fans looking on the outside in. We see it as fans, but we're not the ones going through it though. It's him that's going through it. So if we feel the way that we feel, imagine how he feels, and he's the one in the situation. So just try to have some empathy for uh, for for James Prochet. And again, like I say, I know it's a business. I know business. You got to make tough decisions and all that. You got to make the the, the the real tough choices and whatnot, but um, yeah, man. Shout out to James Prochet, man. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I, I appreciate y'all team. Keep it clean. I love y'all, and we out.